Hey there, Lindsay Bowden here, and in this video, I want to talk about reflections. Reflections, as you already know, are one of the four transformations. There are translations, reflections, rotations, and dilations. A reflection is just flipping a figure over a line of reflection. And in this video, I'm going to give you some strategies to graph a reflection and determine the line of reflection from a graph. So let's get started. When you're reflecting over the x-axis or the y-axis, there are two different methods that you can use. The first one is to use the coordinate rule, and the coordinate rule for the y-axis is negative x, y, which means you change the sign of the x value, you leave the y value the same. So I'm going to show you that with one point. So m is at negative 1, 4. That means m prime will be at positive 1, 4, 1, 4, okay? Another method that you can use is just counting from the line of reflection. So my line of reflection is the y-axis, so here. So I'm going to do this with L. So starting at my line of reflection, L is 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left. So I want to go back to my line of reflection and count one, two, three, four to the right. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with n. n is one, two, three to the left. So back to my line. One, two, three to the right. Usually counting is easier for students, but let's say that you have a shape that's pretty far from your line of reflection somewhere way out here. It's going to take a while for you to count all the way to the line. That's when I would use the coordinate rule. When you reflect over a horizontal line or a vertical line, such as y equals 1, the first thing that I would do is darken in the line of reflection. So y equals 1, that means it's going to be a horizontal line going through 1 on the y-axis. So I'm going to use my ruler. I'm going to darken that in. Now, there are no coordinate rules for horizontal or vertical lines other than the y-axis and the x-axis. So the only method to reflect over these horizontal lines or vertical lines is to count. So I'm going to start at my line of reflection, and I'm going to just pick a point. It doesn't matter which point you start with. I'm going to start with Z. Z is 2 up. So I'm going to go back to my line of reflection and count 2 down. All right, then I'm going to go to Y. Y is 1, 2, 3, 4 up. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 down. Remember, a reflection is a mirror image, so you want to go the same distance, but just the opposite direction. X is 1, 2, 3 up. So I want to go 1, 2, 3 down. When you reflect over diagonal lines, such as the line y equals x, these can be a little confusing to count, but I'm going to show you both ways. You can count or you can use the coordinate rule. The first thing that I want to do is draw my line of reflection. So y equals x is the diagonal line that goes through the origin 0, 0. Make sure your line is really straight, otherwise your reflection will be off. So there's my line of reflection. So I'm going to show you the coordinate rule first. The coordinate rule for y equals x is pretty easy to remember. It's y, x. So I'm going to use a. a is at negative 3, 2. So a prime, I write my y value first, leave it the same sign. Then I write my x value next, leave it the same sign. So basically, you just switch x and y. So positive 2, negative 3. If you forget the coordinate rule or you don't want to memorize the coordinate rules, the other way that you can reflect over diagonal lines is to count. Now, when you count, you want to go perpendicular to the line of reflection. So I want to count this way. And if you want to get a ruler, that might make it a little bit easier for you. And I always say you want to count diagonally through the blocks, so from corner to corner. So I'm going to do C. I'm going to line it up diagonally. So see how this is perpendicular to my line of reflection. 
So right now, C is one diagonal block away. I want to go one diagonal block away in the opposite direction, so right here. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with B. Make sure you line it up. You want it to be perpendicular. And I just want to count from corner to corner. So B is one, two, three away. So I want to go one, two, three. This is another example of a diagonal line of reflection. So y equals negative x. Remember it has a negative one slope. That means it's gonna fall from left to right. So it's gonna be this line going through the origin. This one is a little bit different because the line of reflection actually goes through my figure. So I'm gonna show you again two ways. I'm gonna show you the coordinate rule the coordinate rule for y equals negative x is negative y, negative x. So I'm going to do that for, let's do that for L. So right now L is at negative 1, 2. That means L prime, I'm going to write my y coordinate first, my y value first, but change the sign. Then I'm going to write my x coordinate and change the sign, so positive 1. So that means L is going to be, L prime is going to be negative 2, positive 1, right here. All right, the other method is to use your ruler and line it up perpendicular to the line of reflection and count diagonally through the block. So I'm going to line it up for K. And make sure you're lining it up corner to corner. Be careful because this figure... You don't want to follow the figure. You want to follow perpendicular to the line of reflection. So from corner to corner to corner to corner. Okay, so right now, this point is one, two, three, and a half. So I want to go half, one, two, three. I'm going to show you that one more time. So K is one, two, three, and a half, half, one, two, three. And then I'm going to use my ruler to connect these. And there's your image. Is how to find the line of reflection from a graph. So these have already been reflected for us, and we're trying to find the line of reflection. So I've already started number nine. And this one, the line of reflection is pretty easy to see. You probably immediately saw that it was the x-axis. If you didn't, that's okay. To find the line of reflection, you basically want to find the middle of two corresponding points, so the middle of R and R prime. So you can put your finger and your pencil on the two corresponding points and just kind of walk your way to the middle. And then I can do the same thing with Q and Q prime. I'm just walking my way to the middle. So it has to fall on this line, which is the x-axis. Some problems, like number 10, are a little bit more difficult. In fact, a lot of students might think that this is a uh, rotation. The way you can tell it's not a rotation is because all of the corresponding points, the letters like B and B prime, A and A prime, C and C prime, they all line up. If it was a rotation, A would be down here, B would be down here, C would wind up up here. So if the letters line up, you know that's a reflection. Once you determine it's a reflection, if it looks like it could have been a rotation, it's probably going to be a reflection over a diagonal line. So I'm going to try the two diagonal lines that I know, which are y equals x and then y equals negative x. And this one, you can tell if I line up y equals x, which is just the diagonal line that cuts through the middle, it goes through the origin. I'm going to draw this. Then all of the corresponding points are equally spaced from this line, which means this is my line of reflection. So my line of reflection for this would be y equals x. The next one, same thing. I'm just going to look at the two corresponding points and walk to the middle. Look at the two corresponding points, walk to the middle. So it has to be this line. 
don't forget for your vertical and horizontal lines, you want to see what axis it goes through. So this is going through my x axis. That means it's going to be x equals, and it goes through 2. So the line of reflection is x equals 2. The last thing I want to show you is how to find the rule. So I can already tell from this that my line of reflection is the y-axis. But let's say you don't remember the rules, you haven't memorized them, but the question asks you to write the coordinate rule. The easiest thing to do is to pick two corresponding points. So n is at 1, 3. n prime is at negative 1, 3. And you just want to see what has happened to these points. I can tell my x stayed the same number, but it changed signs. So that would be negative x. My y stayed exactly the same. So that's my coordinate rule. I hope these strategies for reflecting a figure were helpful today. If you want to get my complete reflections lesson, you can get it for free by going to lindsaybowden.com forward slash geometry.